feeling retro. Hey retro lovers, hope you're feeling retro today because we're taking a journey nearly 40 years back in time to look at a variety of retro Sony hi-fi speakers and separates from a time back when Margaret Thatcher was the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, a time of Kenny Loggins' Footloose and the year in which George Orwell predicted the world would have become a dystopian land. Before we get into these brilliant pieces, if you've got any great memories of using these systems or other retro systems like it from this area, drop a comment in the comments section below. If you're a regular on the channel, welcome back. If this is your first time here, we like to talk things retro. And if you're feeling retro, like, subscribe and check out our other videos. Luckily for us, this era was also a period of extreme style and design in the Sony offices in Tokyo. And today we get to dive into a few pieces designed and built between 1984 and 1986. The Sony Compact Disc Player, the CDP-30. The Sony TA-V77 Audio Video Amplifier. The Sony STV77L. And perhaps my favourite ever retro speakers. The one and only, the Sony APM-500s. These are the Mark 1s we've got here. Sony did go on to produce a Mark 2. Unfortunately for us today, the TAV77 audio video amplifier has not been a happy bunny at all. And it doesn't want to let us turn the volume down. So, to save our wonderful speakers today, we're going to switch it to another piece that you may have seen in one of our other videos here at Feeling Retro. Now let's take a closer look at the disc player, the CDP-30. Designed just one year after Sony's revolutionary CDP-101, this system strengthened Sony's grip on the compact disc world, showed the world that Sony were really getting to grips with the CD format right from the off. It had things that we take for granted now. The remote came as standard and you could fast speed search both forwards and backwards. Plus it had an LCD display and a headphone output. And if you factor in Sony's design now and its robust build, the CDP30 was a promising glimpse of the future. At the time, the unit was quite a slender piece at 76 by 35 by 26 centimetres. And I just love this no thrills, slightly bulky, clunky looking 80s design. I think this piece particularly is aged fantastically. I think it looks even better now than it would have done back in the 80s. Leave a comment below if you can think of a hi-fi or any retro electronics that you think have actually aged and look better now than that you remember them looking back when they were first launched. It has a frequency response of 2 hertz to 20 kilohertz, a dynamic range of 90 decibels, and a weight that would seem crazy now, but at the time, a fairly lightweight 3.8 kilograms. In the top left corner, we have the power switch, and I just love these Sony buttons with the click that they produce. Give this a listen. On the left hand side of the piece we have the disc tray and the open close button. As part of the display we have the play and pause icons and next to that we have the play, and the pause and the stop and reset buttons. In the top right hand side we have what Sony call the automatic music sensor keys. I suppose most of us now would just call them forwards and back buttons. Underneath the display we have the time elapsed icon and we have the options to select what we want to repeat. Something you don't see on more modern compact disc players is this inside the tray. You can just see here, these three little knocks here, just to raise that disc. It gives it a nice cushion when you place the disc on top. Now let's take a closer look at the AM FM stereo system control tuner, the STV77L. Let's hear some technical details about the STV77L. On the front, you can see it's vacuum fluorescent display. And on the right hand side, I just love those big, bold, silver preset buttons. This system used the Quartz synthesizer tuning system. It of course had automatic tuning. You can see the 10 memory preset buttons on the right hand side. It had the ability to memory scan and the dimensions were 35 centimeters by eight centimeters by 24 centimeters. And another modest weight at only 2.9 kilograms. This definitely doesn't seem like a heavy system even nowadays. On the left hand side, we have the lovely silver made in Japan, the power button and the system power buttons. We've got the 10 slots here for the preset memory index. 
We also have a memory scan and memory buttons. We have the ability to manual tune and a manual auto sweep button. You may have noticed, unfortunately, our STV77L has experienced a bit of rust on the top. That's been through the walls just a little. And we move on to my two favorite pieces of the day, the APM 500 speakers incredibly stylish and i think these look even miles better now than most speakers that you can get on the market today i just think these must have looked incredibly futuristic and modern back in 1984 the release date of these speakers these are of course the mark ones sony did go on to produce mark twos of these units as well they stand around 36 centimeters tall and about 21 centimeters wide and 21 centimeters deep at just over five kilograms each, these must have been brilliant bookshelf speakers. Let's get those dust covers off and have a really good look inside. With the silver and black colour combo and that orange APM emblem standing out in the centre, I just can't get enough of this retro look. Thanks for joining us again today. If you weren't already before seeing these 80s classics, I'm sure now you're feeling retro. Remember to like and subscribe to keep you feeling retro with Tom and Dan. Oh, the CDs are in the shot. Are they in the shot?